So for that, um, like I said, I'm Trevor. We'll have a little bit more formal introductions here in a second. And so for everyone, thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar, which is Faster Industrial Asphalts, a case study on scan to bim for large complex points. So with that, uh, let me go ahead and oops, gotta get my mouse over. A couple of housekeeping items. Uh, number one, everyone will be muted for this presentation, uh, you know, just to keep things a little bit more organized as well as to cut out the background noise. Number two, questions. If you have any questions at any point that come up through this webinar, uh, please do type them in the chat. There is a chat function over in GoToWebinar. So again, place your questions there. Uh, towards the end of today's session, we will have a Q&A session with Ted. Uh, that way we can go ahead and answer the questions towards the end. The other thing, if you do come in a little bit late or if there's something you miss, uh, this webinar is being recorded and we will happily send out the recording link afterwards so that way everyone can have it. Um, you know, don't worry about that. Again, you'll have the recorded webinar. So with that, I guess, uh, introductions. So I'll go ahead and go first. Uh, I am Trevor with ClearEdge 3D. I'm part of the industry strategy team. Uh, I've been at ClearEdge for quite a while, ever since I was a little startup with about four people. Uh, fun fact about me is I actually love whitewater kayaking. So while it, not be, while it might not be surfing, I am familiar quite with the water. I do love surfing kayaks. I guess, uh, Justin, you want to go next? Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I'm Justin Domer. I've been with ClearEdge for eight years, and I am the product manager for Edgewise. Um, as part of the webinar and, and going through it, we will be doing a sneak peek of uh, the Edgewise 5.7 release, which is going to have unstructured pipe extraction, which we're very excited about. Uh, and fun fact for me, uh, going rock climbing, slack climbing, and I got stuck in uh, Australia at one point or another, so for longer than I wanted to, but uh, still a good time. Perfect. I guess Ted. Yeah, uh, Ted Page, um, Head of Digital Design at Nighthouse uh, Sword Industries UK. Um, 23 years in the AEC industry through various elements of highways, drainage, civil structures, you name it. I've probably done a bit of it. Um, five years with the company, um, developing where we came from five years ago in, in 2D to now in the, the 3D world in, in all varieties. Um, not so much a fun fact, more of a painstaking um, football a supporter of Chesterfield FC, which no one's ever heard of, but they may do if they watch the uh, Ryan Reynolds and Rob Mack documentary about Wrexham. Mm. So that's a bit of a, a sore point. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. So, no, thank you guys. Uh, again, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, I guess, uh, Ted, tell us a little bit about the project. We have our little slide here. So, yeah, take it away. Well, this was something that came around. Um, it's the the first of its time that we as a company ever did. Um, there was a, a seven story disused industrial, say building um, in Europe, certain things I can't name at this stage. Um, but yeah, yeah. We, we, from what we developed in the UK with our kind of getting into 3D scanning world, um, we'd never tried any scans of BIM before. Um, prior to this project, you know, we were asked to kind of, can we recreate a as-built model from the scan data? We were thinking, well, how are we going to do this? So we got in touch with Trevor, got a trial of uh, Edgewise, thought this could well be the tool. This is about a selling marketing plan at this stage. This is kind of like, I think it's possible we could take this project on, you know, seven stories. We've never, I think by that point, we've probably only ever scanned three, four, five sites, not really done any modeling from it as such, but we thought, well, we like a challenge. Let's, you know, let's go ahead, get out there, acquire the scan data, bring it back turn it into a Revit model, see what we've got. Um, the only kind of information we had at the time were some 2D floor plans from 1996. And it's kind of, okay, well, as we all know, is that accurate? Is it just a case of a drawing has been changed to as status? What is there, what is not there? Um, so yeah, we were kind of completely blind to what needed to be done. Um, no kind of, because it was in Europe, you can just pop to site, have a quick look and come back and assess the situation. You know, it, was, it was a day's travel expense to be kind of outweighed in the first instance, you know, the fear of missing something coming back and it's not a quick revisit, you know, it's, it's a lot of money gone. So it's kind of, right, what have we got? Should we do it? Yes. Walking a thin line between success and failure, but that's the way we do it, you know? <laughs> you guys basically just cannonball on the deep end. Yeah, it, like I say, the scale of it was just astronomical compared to anything that, that Nighthouse had done 
in the past, um, completely out of our zone of what we do historically, which is mainly just design, manufacture, build, um, to actually take an as-built scan and then produce a, an accurate 3D model from it to then age the design was something that was a step kind of massively at the time. Whereas now we're kind of, this is what we're doing. And it's only yeah. been a, a short space of time that we've, we've, we've crossed that bridge. Um, but again, without kind of sucking up to the uh, clear edge people without that sort <laughs> I think I'd still be doing it now. You know? <laughs> no, all good, all good. So let's take a look a little bit about the uh, project summary here. So. Yeah, as you can see on the on the image of the right is a is a low res image of the building itself. Um, again, there was basement levels. Um, again, it's an ex industrial building, so there was a mass amount of pipe work, redundant live um, cable tray, HVAC ducting, hand railing, steel columns, openings in floors. And it's just like wow, this is a lot to capture. Um, yeah, the, the, just in, insane. But, and then. Basically, from that, we would then create a concept model. Nothing again, nothing like LOD 500, just a kind of LOD 100. Just what is what is the geospatial area of this building? What hazards are in the way? Is there a column there? Is there an opening above there that we can actually get kit through? Can we open up these openings to make it bigger? More of a kind of structural assessment from the, the model itself. And the deliverables were essentially, as I've touched on, a 3D point cloud and then a Revit model from that. Um, no production of 2Ds, elevations, anything like that. It's mainly just so we could bring the site back to the, to the design teams, which again, were based in Nighthouse HQ in Holland, the UK team, and then the client as well throughout Europe. So again, as we know now, the advent of 3D scanning, you bring that site back to the people, you've got people going across there day in, day out, week after week, racking up the uh, the pounds and the dollars on, on travel. <laughs> Uh, d definitely. So that's actually kind of talk a little bit about some of the challenges faced actually for this uh, this little bit of a bit of a task you got. <laughs> yeah, not only the the size, the unknown of we've never done this before. It was also during the first lockdown for COVID, mm. which presented yet another massive problem. Yeah. <laughs> which you know we were all set. We spent months planning um, scan plans on the two Ds. Sort of that logistics, travel, hotels, blah, blah, blah. I'd factored in a two-man team with two Faro S150 tripod scanners, 10-hour days, um, or five days in a week to capture all of that data. Then the day before we were due to fly, um, we got put on the red list for this country so we couldn't actually enter the country. And it's like, well, this is now not how we're going to do it with the software. It's how we're going to do it without actually doing it. So luckily, we, we outsourced to another European country that could get across that weren't on the red list. So they acquired the scan data, sent it out to us, which was, I think the raw data was close to 200 gig of data, which again, we'd probably only ever dealt with a few gig of data because predominantly in, in our industry, we've either got a, a greenfield empty site that is just a case of it's a field, we're going to put some kit in it, or it's an existing site and it's basically you've got a 10 square meter area to put your kit and we'll go and scan that bring it back so it's very small stuff whereas this was yeah more than the entire server storage that we've got and, and x y and z on top of that yeah no nope. again the, un the unknown as i mentioned it would have been a one visit job no kind of revisit because yeah it what it, it wasn't you know viable to do that the unusual complex space which again as you can see from the images on the right, which is the WIP model of, there's some piping in there. I say some, there's about 15,000 pipes. Um, the steel structures, um, there were certain areas on the 2D as built, which were kind of no-go areas, or you needed rooftop access training, you needed this, you needed a chaperone, there's some other nuances in there. Um, other than that, yeah, it was the first time we'd done anything like this, so everything was new. Then we would kind of sat waiting for the, the scan date to be delivered and then thinking, right, as soon as it's delivered, we're going to get that light to go and model. And it's like, right, we want to know what we're doing. Again, do we have the hardware that can support a point cloud of that size? Luckily, I've done the research prior to that and we upgraded to decent spec machines. Um, so that wasn't an issue, but even still with a decent spec machine trying to load in a point cloud of that size to say Revit, 
it's not going to happen. And then you'd have to separate it up into a grid at point cloud, extract this, extract that, rebuild it. That's asking for error as well. So in my view, the fact that we used Edgewise, which processed everything through, which I will touch on in a minute, that was a, a godsend in that. All right. Like actually, let's go, kind of go ahead and talk a little bit about the workflow that used to, uh, you know, basically uh, accomplish this. So, yeah. So again, start with the the image, which I'll come back to the workflow in a minute. But this was the kind of end deliverable, which wasn't obviously the the 3D model as such or the point cloud. But we, as soon as we built up the the final model, we ran it through a software called Lumion. Um, applied all the, the kind of materials that made it look exactly like it did on site. So at least the client and anyone could look at it and go, well, that is an accurate representation of what we've got. Again, like I say, it was a shame that we couldn't get out there and acquire the scan data, but then you've also got benefits of if anything did go wrong with the scan data, we're not liable. You could get a revisit at the uh, contractor's cost. Um, so there's a bit of weight lifted there. Um, again, I'll touch on, on that the party data collection shortly. Um, like I say, the Faro S150 um, terrestrial scanner was used. So again, tripod mounted. Yeah. The size of the building, that's, yeah, you're talking, it was a week of solid scanning. Um, and then the final clean point cloud was sized at roughly 170 gig, um, which again, that is huge. Um, so yeah, workflow from start to finish, obviously software used was retrieve the raw data, Run it through recap, which again, it was good that the the point cloud was registered and processed by the third party, so we didn't have to then blindly try and piece together and stitch together the point cloud, thinking, well, oh, not, God. we've not been on site, so is 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 that, that? We all know what recaps like sometimes with trying to get this point and that point to match. Um, yeah, through that, obviously into Edgewise, out of that export to Revit, and then yeah, we used a bit of Lumion just to add a bit of visual visual niceness to it. <laughs> no, perfect. Yeah, no, I just no, I just can imagine uh trying to do all that and recap, especially without seeing the site beforehand. That would have been an absolute nightmare trying to get that all registered and everything. So yeah, and actually speaking of the registration, uh yeah, tell us a little bit about kind of, you know it's, it's as though this has been planned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, third party processed and they registered all the scan data, which was good in one hand. The other side of it was they didn't actually clean it up. <coughs> so we had well, one, two, three, four, four or five floors, um, windows on every face. The amount, the amount of light noise coming through that was immense. So none of it was, was cleaned up. So I still had to delve into recap then to, to clean this up, which was the, the largest chunk of work really in in relativity um yeah like i say the cleanup was done in there it <coughs> excuse me recap did not like it at all just in it in its its complete process state and, and register state um it was a case of we do have the separate rcs files of each floor did we go and model floor by floor um but no again maybe in hindsight the workflow would change knowing what we know now from this project but uh, we, we went straight in and uh, kind of used it as a, a whole whole point cloud no oh, no perfect yeah and then basically taking that whole point cloud and then you guys just brought it straight in the edgewise correct and that's kind of what i think yeah that's the next slide no absolutely again maybe if it had been split into into floor by floor we could have got attacked things quicker but no, I put it straight into Edgewise. I think it took maybe 16 hours. 16 hours of processing? Process. Yeah. Because there was just just an infinite amount of, of points in there. Again, it, it was massive. Um, yeah, once it processed through, there's certain things that I'll come to at the end, which is kind of lessons learned. But I'll, I'll touch on it now. Processed all the pipe work didn't need it in the end that would have saved maybe eight hours probably um, certain areas which again is because of the unknown we weren't able to kind of assess exactly and engage with the client the client was unaware of what they really needed and what the 3d point cloud scan to bim workflow was they just wanted something at the end of it 
So what we know now is we know what we know. Back then it was a case of let's just model everything. Okay. Um, yeah. Do we need to? No. Um, still, you know, the, the amount of pipe work that came out is still there. It's still modeled if we need it at a later stage. So in in the future, it may be a saving grace that we've already got it. Um, the fact that we don't need it is just a bit of a, a bit of a bummer. But hey, we're there. Um, once we've gone through the the, the process in in Edgewise, again using semi extraction for for steel, um, selecting the the correct um, steel standards, and then it was a case of just using all the all the tips and tricks within Edgewise to extract columns, beams. Um, obviously, get in touch with you guys as we were going through to get some some tech support when needed. And yeah, it was such a I wouldn't say easy, but but when you when you compare it to what it would have been manually modeling through Revit, it's, it's a breeze. It, it was such a, a, a time saver. Um, and the fact you could export straight to Revit at the end of it with the intelligence of that, that common data or, or that pipe data, again, it, it saves so much from the, the historic way that when I joined Nighthouse, we we're doing 2D plans and sections and elevations for everything that we were doing. And it's kind of, that's just the way we do it. Whereas now we've, we've moved into the 3D world with, you know, aspiring to be BIM level X, Y, and Z in the UK. Um, everything is now being placed on BIM 360. We're doing everything in Revit, export to Navisworks, just bring everything together. The element of 2D is gone and we've educated people within the company and now expanding to our clients of actually what this means. It's not just a pretty picture anymore. There is actually relevance and, and a need for this. It's not just, oh, let's spend some money on some software because it's a bit of a cool kit. Let's get a 3D scanner because it's a bit of a cool kit. There is that element in there. It's nice to work with cool things. But, but, but this project is is it's a testament for without that how would you have got to this stage no it's yeah no i think that's a great testament right there um <laughs> no to that end uh kind of focusing a little bit on the edgewise side because again that is a that is an absolutely fantastic model produced by edgewise with a lot of structural steel in there now tell us a little bit about kind of experience because this was actually kind of, was this your first time pretty much working Edgewise, correct? Yeah. yeah. So this is brand new. <laughs> yeah, let's not start and do a small site build up and then eventually do that. Let's go straight in. And then do that. <laughs> if it works on that, then we've got no trouble working on anything else. Um, but yeah, I would like to say it's down to my amazing skills and ability to pick up these. <laughs> <laughs> but they've got the algorithms, I've not. But anyway, yeah. Again, first point on the on the slide there is, is time savings. It, it took, I say three weeks, it was a full three weeks and maybe a, a touch more to actually complete that modeling within Edgewise itself. Um, yeah, it's, you know, like I keep, I keep saying, if we were to do that without the software, just a massive amount of error will creep in. You'd, you'd miss a lot of things. There'd be crashes here and there trying to recover data just the scale of it and, and try and get the accuracy as well. Not a chance. Um, so yeah, the, the way that, again, I don't understand how Edgewise has the algorithms that makes the point cloud more manageable. Don't get me wrong, we still have crashes, but you've got something of that size, it's always gonna happen. But you try and load it again in recap and it's just, no, I wanna orbit, let's wait a few minutes. But obviously Edgewise is built for point clouds solely and you can spin around, click this, click that, I wanna get into there, get into this it made it felt like it was actually in the site itself just picking certain columns to to model and yeah again I, I can't praise it enough but for money saving approximately again you, you take three weeks against i'd envisage maybe three months probably to maybe model that in revit without the the software yeah you, know, you could say 20k you could say 30k it, that could keep rising on reworks that you may need to do. The fact you can verify the Edgewise data very easily. And again, using, oh, I forget what um, option it is in Edgewise, like the remain uh, cloud. Uh, yep, the remainder cloud are the smart points, the uh, yeah. special point cloud exports. Yeah, so once you've actually modeled certain bits, it takes that out of the equation and shows you what's left. So it's a case of, ah, there's a column there, there's something there, not just by visually going, yeah, I think that's right, you know, to actually physically see that cloud decimated as you're going through it. It's just a kind of checklist as as you're working, and it's one of those things that you you think it's this is too easy. There's going to be some, there's going to be a, a catch somewhere, or there's going to be a major flaw. So far, didn't see it in that 
um, the client's probably listening thinking, no, it's terrible. <laughs> 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 We've not told you yet, but no, no but yeah, no, it, it, it was money saved, time saved. Um, and it was another introduction, like at, at the bottom, bottom of the slide, introduce innovation to the company. You know, Nighthouse has always prided itself on being innovative, whereas bringing out new technologies in the, in the water industry, um, things like the most recent one, which is, you know, turning a, a local Southwest um, League One football club, turning their away fans' toilets, um, all their T to P, we call it, or P to pitch. So uh, yeah. all their, their waste then gets turned into fertilizer to, to sprinkle on their, their football field. So innovations like that, not just what you see, but from, from my side, the digital area, the, the tech side, we're, uh, yeah, we're a fairly new company to this kind of world. But I say it's kind of been, there's never been anything we've done. It, it's, it was this project that kind of was the first thing and there's still people that don't know what scan to bin means, but the more we do it, the more it gets out there. Um, and again, yeah, straight from the UK, you know, I've got a team of uh, two people. So it's not as though I had a big team on this. It was essentially me doing the edgewise and then my colleague doing the Revit afterwards. So it just goes to show you don't need a team of 20 people to get these things done. Oh, no, I, I mean, again, I think it's fantastic because, like I said, this was like, or like I said, this is basically the first kind of foray into this. And, you know, it's not like you guys took it on a small little job or anything. No, you guys went straight to the deep end. Uh, again, no ramping up with Edgewise. It was just like, hey, we have this massive project. Here's Edgewise. Let's go for it. And I, again, I would say you guys knocked it out of the park, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that if it had gone wrong, I would not be sat here. <laughs> the t shirt on say so this is yeah, I'll be working probably. <laughs> no, it's a risk you've gotta take it's a risk you've gotta to take to get to where you need to be, so Oh no, I completely understand, understand. And I actually do that and I, you know, I'm really curious kinda of like how everything I guess uh you know kind of wrapped up and now you know, they say hindsight's twenty twenty, but you know, uh kind of things that you've learned, you know, after this experience with, you know, BIM, late, you know, all of it. Yeah, lots of lessons learned. Probably still a lot of learning to be done. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like I say, the, the, the first factor was the fact that we couldn't acquire our own scan data. You know, I think anyone that's listening or anyone that's been involved with Edgewise, 3D scanning or anything of that uh, throughout the careers, if you can acquire your own data, you've got ownership of it. You know what's, what's what, you, you know that that is correct or any error that may have crept in. For something of that size, again, it was a bit scary to think we've got to rely on someone else's data that we, we can't very much have been given something and and that's that. Um, another thing, uh, you know, agree on the level of detail, a level of information from day one, you know, we, because everyone in the project was kind of new to what was needed and it's kind of, oh yeah, we can go out and, and we can get a model of everything. So the client's kind of, oh, we just want a model. Okay, so that's not filtered through, but what exactly do you want? Well, as much as you can. So, okay, but actually, it, it came down to being just the walls, the floors, the steel columns, and any openings. Other than that, we kind of went too far. Um, it didn't kind of hinder the overall time scale. It was just extension on that initial processing time. No. Um, because with the pipe work, I just did the semi semi auto extraction that ran through anyway and left it at that. So I've not done any connections. I've not put any valves, flanges, anything like that. So it's kind of just left in its its first run. Um, yeah, like I say, tips, best practice, of lessons learned is, is all taking the ownership, agreeing the level of detail. Um, I'm not sure if it's the next slide or or what I'm going to touch on which where certain things maybe <laughs> went wrong with elements. No, I was just laughing about the, uh, you know, being able to control the data collection process is to me one of the biggest things. I mean, I get a lot of point cloud data from external sources and it's just kind of like, you know, you're almost like kind of, you can only laugh because the only option is to cry, you know, when you're like, why didn't you scan over there? Or, you know, you see, you know, it just being able to control that process, you know, it just makes it a lot smoother, everything downstream, I guess. I mean, that's, to me, that's a huge thing. Um, uh, so I guess, uh, yeah, I guess uh, a couple more little, little things. <laughs> yeah, make sure you've got enough storage and back up your data often. <laughs> this is an element of uh, personal error mixed with a bit of poor infrastructure, which, yeah, um, kind of halfway through or maybe after week one and a half of extracting the uh, steel columns, my extremely reliable Samsung SSD 
failed um, because of the size of these these models, etc. We didn't have any backup space uh, anywhere. <laughs> so return that, replaced, lost all the data. Not only was it a week and a half of this edgewise modeling, there was also three other sites of, of scan data, which then we had to go back and revisit. Luckily, I'd learned so much within that first week and a half, I was able to replicate exactly what I'd done kind of boom, very quickly. So it wasn't kind of, again, with, without, you know, being, oh, Edgewise is amazing, this and that. This, this is, we're here because Edgewise is good. It helps on our projects. But it was so intuitive to, to then learn the new things, which is kind of day one. I was, you, you know, overhead beams, right? I'll, I'll, I'll extract that one, that one, that one. Speaking to Trevor on tech support, actually, there's an option. So then anything that's parallel and the same size, you can then, I don't know, I forget what the terminology is, but, you know, each floor is very similar. And if it's all the same, you can click on 10 beams, copy across, and it will then extract everything that is in that exact same area. So you kind of bring the speed back up again, back up again. But yeah, we lost a week in total. Um, like I say, luckily, it was, it's very easy to, to recreate um, again. I can't say more than that on Edgewise, really. It, it, it did the job completely. And, and then obviously believe that now. Again, I think I touched at the beginning that we, you know, we're not a professional scan to BIM, 3D scanning services, um, surveying company. We're, you know, more design, manufacture, build, service, maintain. Um, but we are offering that now as kind of what we do. It, it used to be a, in the early days, should we do a 3D scan on this site? Oh, should we have the client fill and pay for it? Da, da, da. Now it's a kind of, we'll capture the data for you. There's no option to opt in or opt out. We kind of, this is a standard for what we're doing to, to capture the site, bring it back, whether it's pre-design stage, um, construction verification, you know, any stage of the project that requires a scan, which prior to what we know now, you know, using a, a Faro threshold scanner, for example, when we trialed that on one of our local sites, we did an as-built scan in, in say six hours. Got in touch with the guys at Navis um, with their mobile map in VLX, came down, same site again, uh, 20 minutes. It's kind of, is it the level of accuracy that we need? Yes, perfect. So now we can, we can offer that multiple visit to site in a, you know, in a matter of hours, as opposed to days of, of, of them processing time because we, you know, we've got the, the software of, with the VLX with IBM. So yeah, like I say, in our first couple of years, we probably did two or three scans a year I think already this year in, in 2022, we're probably touching 65, 70 scans um, already, which is a, mass, a massive change around. And, and, and now again, again, because we're a global company, we're now forming a, a global digital design group so that everything can be, be shared. We, we do the same workflows for each project, whether it be UK, Holland, Germany, um, the Americas. So that, that's our goal is this is just the start of things to come. And hopefully we can, you know, maybe get a VLX in each each area um, and, and take what we've learned so far and, and just globalize it and become known for that as well as what we do in our day to day kind of historic legacy work. Wow, no, that's no. I think this is. Uh, I mean, flat out, I'm impressed. I mean, first time kind of with all of this. I again, like I said, I think you guys absolutely knocked it out of the park. You know, no ramp up, no nothing, just. So now kudos, kudos. Uh, There's one point I will make actually that when we then overlaid <laughs> the as built from 1996 against the model, and then we, you know, obviously it was, uh, I think the as built were done by a German company, and we all know German engineering. So I think the as built were probably out by about oh, five mil. <laughs> That's. <laughs> but, but then after that, we're thinking, would that have been enough? Did we need to scan? But then there was a lot of hidden rooms that weren't on the as built. There was a lot of missing columns. So again, to verify that data and know that the two, you know, the two D as built were pretty bang on, just for those little bits of, and pieces that were missing, it was just yeah. To then be able to pass that model on to the next stage of people to put the concept waste water treatment plants in there, do the conceptual structural work. Excellent, you know when you're working globally collaboratively to be able to pass the site around instead of someone coming across from America to, to Europe, someone from UK to Europe, vice versa. What you spend on on the, the software, the, the hardware, you, you reap the rewards without having to travel. No, I, I definitely, yeah, 100% agree. 
And actually kind of the, one of the interesting things is kind of almost, I guess you could say the direction of this industry. And I think, you know, you touched upon that, you know, something that would take a traditional tripod based scanner, what, like six hours to scan, you know, you can show up with basically one of these, uh, I mean, I think it's absolutely fantastic kind of the direction uh, the mobile scanner is going into is again, 20 minutes. Like, you know, I, I have a similar story too to that where it's just, it is freakishly fast, almost how much data capture you can get. And it's just kind of, I remember scanning and then we had booked the whole day for this and then we were done in 20 minutes and we we're like, now what, you know, like, no, and I definitely, uh, I think that's one of the futures of the industry. And actually to that end, uh, I guess, Justin, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of some of the new stuff that Edgewise has to take advantage of some of the new emerging technologies for that? Um, yeah, I mean, so we're also pretty excited about the uh, the VLX and what it can do, and that's why we're excited to be able to work with that data now in the upcoming release. Um, so without that, so Ted, I mean, awesome projects. Thanks so much for working on it. I'm glad Edwards worked for you. I mean, it was uh, it just went straight into the deep end, and it seems like it worked out. So that's uh, you know that's not always how it goes, and and definitely glad to hear that. Um, so at this point, what I'll do is I'll kind of transition over and I can kind of show Edgewise and some of the results we're getting for uh, what we did in 5.7 and, and, you know, kind of talk about what the, what the workflow is and what that looks like. Let's do that now. Let's see. All right. Hopefully everyone can see my screen here. It should be just a window of Edgewise and it should look like a very familiar data set for anyone who's ever done a demo with us. Uh, the, this is our kind of stock demo data. This is originally Faro data, but um, in this case, what we did is we unified it uh, and then ran it through our new algorithm. So with that new algorithm, that's kind of built into our old location for or the, the existing location for walls, but I can create a pipe model. And some of the new things we've added are, again, just the ability to automatically extract pipes from unstructured data or mobile data, um, really just any combination of data, if it's points, you know, floating in space, we can that, uh, make a cylinder that we're able to extract that. Uh, we also added a additional feature, which is just being able to remove uh, diameters based on kind of whatever predefined range you want. Um, so just a nice little QA cleanup step. And the biggest thing is that this process is fully multi-threaded. Uh, it fully takes advantage of the CPUs that people have. And so, if you have a four core, you know, quad core CPU, and uh, if you have an eight core CPU, it's twice as fast uh, as running it on a on a quad core. So we're really excited about the ability to really take advantage of the CPUs that are coming out today and process a lot more data uh, even quicker. So right now we are looking at this being uh, faster than our existing uh, process scans for structured data. Um, and then the other benefit is the ability to cut and clean up your data like you're going to have to do to go into Revit anyways. So being able to, you know, cut it into chunks and, uh, you know, section it however you normally would do that for read Revit in your standard workflow and just run those chunks through Edgewise and be able to bring that in is one option. You can bring in, you know, your whole project unified. Uh, you can work with the structured data if you want to do that. So it's, you know, extremely flexible now. And then we're also able to work with uh, VLX data. Uh, so in this case, this is, you know, again, our kind of stock data set, uh, but we are extracting very similar to what we had before as far as our process scans uh, for structured data. We're able to get small stuff. We're able to get the, you know, the big stuff. Uh, in this case, I ran it with the, you know, filtering on. So we, we removed a bunch of uh, kind of different sizes that I didn't really care about for the scope, but um, it's, basically running and, and creating our runs. Uh, in this case, the workflow still applies. We can go through and I can grab, you know, smart sheets and go to the QA mode and see the data and look at the elements and, and see how they line up. Um, I can also go ahead and run our standard option for easy connect. And this will go through and, you know, do its thing for filling in all the gaps for us. Um, so the workflow is pretty much the same. It's just a lot more flexibility and the ability to uh, process different types of data. So uh, again, we're really excited about this one. Uh, we've been working on it for a while, but um, we definitely want to get this into people's hands very soon. Uh, another example of this that I have is our, uh, it's actually a demo data set from VLX uh, from Navis. So 
uh, just like I said before, you know, you can take any clip of the data. It doesn't have to be the full point cloud and and run it. And we also are able to extract different runs and systems from the from the data inside of here. So that's what we've been working on for Edgewise 5.7. Uh, additionally, we also support Revit 2023, which we're glad to get in people's hands. Um, and yeah, so we will uh, we will that's our sneak peek for Edgewise, and and we're really excited to. Yeah, we just, you know, we've been working on it a long time, but, um, you know, we, we know this is going to be a big step in the right direction to be able to cover people's workflows and uh, and work with things like VLX and other mobile scanning data. Yeah, no, thank you. I guess, thank you so much, Justin. This is something we at Clear are very excited about. And I guess, you know, Ted, if you could imagine, like, you know, go out, scan for 20 minutes with a VLX, run it through Edgewise, you know, within what? Shoot, with under a day, you'll have your model like sitting there by 50, 70 percent complete, just waiting for you ready to go. So taking that three weeks and probably shaving it down even further, you know, probably inside of a week. So now it's going to be something again. We are extremely, uh, you know, excited about is the new uh, piping algorithms we got. So, um, yeah, I guess with that, um, I guess we'll now open up the floor to do a little bit of uh, QA. So I guess uh, this is the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, uh, Justin, did you want to kind of open up the uh, questions and I guess we can fire them off to whoever needs them. Whoever needs them. Yeah, um, let's see, take a look here. Uh, uh, okay, well, so one, uh, one, one of the first questions was, you know, obviously this is your first round of working on uh, this sort of project. What and, and I think you covered it a little bit, but are there any other components that you would or workflow parts that you would want to change and, and try out for you know future attempts at doing something like this? Again, it's probably breaking something down of this size to actually um, extract the areas I need as we're going. Mm -hmm. But you know, even floor by floor was was kind of large, so just decompartmentalizing those things into small manageable chunks with obviously having the control that we can piece it back together as it should, but I think trying to dive in and, and, and do everything at once was kind of a bit of a, a blind side. We, we should have actually broken it down and made it more manageable. If I had a, a larger team, you know, could have had a few people working on that one on floor one, floor two, floor three, um, but it is what it is. Um, any changes to the workflow as such? Probably not. It changed dramatically now that we've got the, the VLX. I would love to go back to many sites I've done in the past with a, a Faro scanner um, and recap and gone back with a, a VLX and, and compare the, the, not just the data, but the workflow of extracting that information and, and building the point cloud and then see how it works. Again, I, I was part of the uh, beta program for I think 5.7 or it came out. So we have run a few scan data through from the VLX with the, the beta version of 5.7, what's coming out and we're impressed with that. So. Yeah, the workflow is what we'd probably change now, uh, probably based on the on the software and hardware that we've got. Um, again, recap we don't tend to use now to, to piece together and register. It's more of a verification of viewer. Um, so yeah, on top of that, I don't even know if we'd even do something this large again, to be honest. Yeah. Not whether the opportunity would present itself or whether we'd just say it was just kind of too much to, to chew. Um, too much to, to, to try, try, and, try and crack on with and get correct. Um, maybe it was one of those one timers that actually, when it worked, it opened the doors for future projects. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of almost that kind of thing where you you speculate to accumulate, and you spend some money, it comes off, the doors open. If it had failed, we may not even have been doing. We wouldn't have bought a three D scanner probably or, or things like that. So it was a, a big kind of litmus test on on the capabilities of what can be achieved. Now it's kind of refining those workflows to to see what type of project it is, again, engaging with the client, get the client knowing what the deliverables could be, what's possible, not just a case of, oh, what's a 3D scan, why do I need it? And well, we can do this, we can do that, we can do that. We've got workflows to adapt to each situation. And as we use more software, as we, we grow as a team, every project is different. Um, so yeah, I'd like to attack this project again from a different angle. Um, and yeah, I think the main thing would just be the, the size of the, the point cloud, reduce that down dramatically, just to speed up things again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see, uh, some other questions. So I think one was, uh, you know, do you guys own the scanner? So you guys just bought a VLX, but it seems like it was another team that did the FLS for, for doing the, the Faro scans. Yeah. Um, and uh, part of that question was, uh, did, did you receive training from Edgewise, uh, from Clear 
your edge for using edgewise. Uh, we did. Think, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, we had the official training, I think, from Trevor himself. Um, which again, we, we had the, the, the kind of 70 days trial, which you can extract kind of 40 items or what it was. So we, we tested that on a very small site and went, wow, this is amazing. Which again, like we say, was, was nothing compared to, I think, when we finished, we exported maybe 4,500 um, Revit columns. Wow. So when you put it in words and numbers like that, it's kind of, wow. You know, to look at it, you think, oh, it's just a building. So that's, that's large. But when it's 4,500 Revit columns, yeah, even if someone drawing a Revit column a day, even copy, paste, copy, paste, it's going to take hours, <laughs> even if it's in no kind of alignment or anything. But to get it accurate to, to millimeters of where it should be, yeah, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. So another question is, uh, you saved $20,000. Would you say the cost was uh, with your Edgewise workflow included in the, the cost of the software? Or is that, um, so that's including the cost of the software? Okay. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Do <laughs> uh, you guys use survey control during the workflow? Um, there were some existing control points, which were from Luckily, the original points were still there from 96, so it actually set up externally, and then it was all controlled internally um, with the third party um, scanning acquisition. Again, I'd like to be able to verify that exactly, but again, acquiring third, third party data without the original um, as built data and being there myself, we just had to kind of, again, a bit of a risk taking it on saying this is exactly controlled to where it needs to be, it's tight. We just have to have the faith. Um, gotcha. Okay. Um, so some other questions are uh, for the kind of workflow for scan data to Edgewise. So it sounded just a, it sounded like you kind of had everything registered in recap, and then sent the full point cloud to Edgewise, and then separate, and then after that, then you broke it up into chunks for bringing in the Revit. Is that uh, is that kind of sound right for or what was that workflow like? That's what. We'll was a workflow that could have happened. Again, yeah, we had the whole um, tied together, full seven story point cloud in, in recap. We processed all that straight into Edgewise. Um, and then as for actually inserting any point cloud data into Revit itself, that was only through the Edgewise Revit plugin, which where we've got a wall, we want to add some windows. You, you Again, without, okay, gotcha. without the terminology from Edgewise, it's kind of you then portray the point cloud on that face. You can see where the windows are. So that's the only time that a point cloud ever, ever touched Revit. Everything was modeled within Edgewise and then used the export to Revit function. Yeah, so and that was also the, the smart points and the remainder cloud. Yeah, the remainder cloud as well. And so remainder, just, yeah, so people understand what that is. So Edgewise has the ability to export a, a new point cloud that is caught up based on what's been modeled in Edgewise. And so the idea is that you can do a smart points export, which is where you only export points that are near geometry that you've modeled. Uh, and you can break that up by lots of different things. You can break that up by you know what you have selected, by pipes, by structure. Um, but it just kind of makes sure that everything that you've modeled has points around it for getting extra detail, like going and doing walls and doors and you know windows or, or connections for piping or hangers and things like that. Uh, and then the other option is remainder cloud, which is kind of the opposite, where we export a new point cloud that is only the points that haven't been modeled. Um, and so that's something, you know, the idea for that being, if we miss anything in Edgewise, then there's still something in Revit that you can go and you can fill that in. Uh, or if you, you know, for things that we don't do in Edgewise, which is going to be like mechanical pumping and uh, pumps and equipment and things like that, that's still points that are still sitting in Revit without having to bring in the entire original point cloud. Um, yeah, that, so. that can be useful for areas where it's kind of, well, what's this dead space? Oh, actually, it was a, a bit of plant equipment. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Instead of trying to troll through photos or, or the real-time photos in recap, it's kind of, that's what it is. It's there. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, so we are getting a bunch of questions about Edgewise in general, so I kind of, I'll answer those as well. Uh, so Edgewise uh, can model uh, doing walls as well as piping automatically. Um, so we would go through and we extract basically all the, the flat surfaces uh, as walls, and those will go into Revit as native walls. Um, and then we also are able to do uh, the piping. Uh, we can't do equipment, but we can do kind of all the connections that goes into the, the equipment. So, you know, all of the structure holding up, all the pipes going in, all the ducting systems, all the cable trays. Um, and then 
with Remainder Cloud, hopefully we can kind of give you the points inside of your final deliverable to have everything you need to, you know, get the equipment modeled directly. Um, okay, and we did that. Da, da, da. Um, let's see, Rick's going to do uh, the questions for Edgewise. Uh, so we do, I mean, we want to add some more automation in the future, but uh, as far as being able to extract things like structure and stuff like that, uh, but that is a, uh, there's no date or promises or along those lines. So that's, uh, it's taken a while to do the unstructured pipe extraction, and that's because it turned out it's really hard to do. Um, so we've we've been working on it for a while, but, uh, you know, we're, we're very happy with kind of the end results and, and uh, you know, excited to get it in people's hands. And, we are definitely working at you know some other things for for the future. We have a lot of very very smart uh, programmers who are very good at math and make magic happen. And uh, we're you know keep looking at stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, any other questions? Just, uh, um, yeah. Oh, uh, so this is actually a very common question. So. For uh, what did you guys, you know, what was your approach for dealing with like windows and mirrors and things like that for in the point cloud? Uh, as everything about ASAP kind of last week. <laughs> so yeah, the, 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 the time frames were kind of as soon as we get the um, the acquired data, it was, well, you know, when do you think you can promise? So did a bit of estimation, um, wasn't too far off, maybe two weeks two weeks difference, maybe two weeks sooner than anticipated. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if we'd have probably not processed everything at once, we could have concentrated floor by floor, delivered floor one, delivered floor two, delivered floor three. That would be another way I would have broken it down. Again, back to the original question of workflows, but again, kind of timeframes of this. There wasn't a, a mass push, but there was a lot of pressure to say, look, you know, you guys need to get this done before a certain date. And we came within that, so I was extremely happy, even with the lost data. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's and that's terrifying. <laughs> the data loss is, I think, pretty much anyone who's in this has that fear and cold sweats from that one. Um, back up your data. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I think, uh, Trevor, do you see any other kind of questions in here? I think a lot of them are, I think we've covered most of them. Um, ooh, uh, this is a good question. Uh, we will be at Autodesk University, so I think Trevor and we will have a big crew, actually. So I think uh, there will be a lot of us at Autodesk University. Um, I don't remember our booth number, though. I think it's like 257 or something like that um, in that area. Yeah, it is uh, CON255. That's close. Okay. Um, you have seen it. Yeah, so we will be there and we will be, you know, showing off uh, all the different stuff that we have. Uh, I think there was one other question in here and it was about how did you kind of do verification to make sure you model things correctly? Um, well, like again, the, the workflow for that. yeah, that was again using kind of the smart sheet to making sure that everything with the points aligned exactly, you know, we've only got the information in front of us, short of being on site and, and getting the, uh, you know, Get a, a thickness gauge, measure thickness of flanges on the on the beams and columns. Certain mm -hmm. things. To do. If we were going for a higher level of detail, we would have verified each column thickness exactly. Because it was low level of detail, it was more of a conceptual. Is this in the right area? We weren't going for accuracy of extremely accurate. Well, that is one thing that. Sorry, my daughter's just turned up. Hello, Hello. There she is. Hello. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, that's probably the only thing that we, we went massive on, which was the verification, but going through all the options available in Edgewise, using smart sheets, just making sure that everything was aligned into the points that were provided. That is all we could do, really, without being on site and, and physically verifying every measurement, yeah. just to make sure that there was no massive error. That they tied up from the survey points with the as built scan within five mil. The only thing is, we were out of position with kind of things that weren't there on the as built. So if there had been kind of well, this one's five, that's 10, that's 25. I'm thinking, hang on, there's some, there's some error on here somewhere. But it kind of, again, I don't know if we're lucky on this project <laughs> and everything fell into alignment. Um, we just need to do more of it. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to get stuck at some point. Yeah. But each project's different. And, and yeah, if it was a high level of detail and we were within the vicinity and I'd actually visit the site, we would have taken no measurements, verified everything as much yeah. as we could. But we were kind of 
going blind. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, uh, we do have, uh, just to kind of, for anyone who doesn't know, for Edgewise, there are kind of specialized tools that are part of the workflow to immediately jump you into uh, a, the, an optimal view to see how the geometry you've created lines up at the point cloud. So there's a couple of variations depending on the geometry, but the uh, it's just a really nice way to just quickly jump into it. And anyone who's doing point cloud modeling in Revit, you know, there's a lot of section cuts, there's a lot of positioning you got to do. It's a lot of a lot of clicks to get into the right view to be actually see how the points line up with the geometry and it's generally one click for edgewise it's just open the qa mode and you can look at an element um, and, and along with uh, the smart points can be really helpful for kind of getting into that information as well um, let's see so other questions so uh, just for workflow uh, there there are other plant applications so edgewise is definitely works with revit and that is a very very common workflow for a lot of our users but we do also support some other export and workflows, uh, including Plant 3D. Uh, we do have PDMS Aviva plugin, but we're, and we're working on a uh, E3D export. So that's another thing. But uh, yeah, there's there's stuff we can go to CADWorks with PCF. We can go to Plant 3D, uh, AutoCAD. You know, we can do a step export, so it'll go just about anywhere. So there's a lot of flexibility in the workflow for for working with Edgewise, uh, which we're very excited about. We like that we can now once 5.7 is released, work with basically any data that's imported as long as it's, you know, good enough. Um, I will say garbage in, garbage out. So, you know, VLX has proven to have excellent data quality and that is something that we can leverage. Um, you know, I haven't tried iPhone data yet, but uh, it's a little different, I would guess. And uh, so, you know, that, that flexibility though is something we're very excited about. Um, I do not, Believe we don't have a direct export for us 3D. Um, we have PCIF, a PCF export, so it'd be an option for checking it out. If that is an import option, that'd be interesting here. Um, yeah, drone data. Uh, we can do that. We actually had a crazy, you know, there's there's different. Anytime if, you, if there's point clouds with round cylinders that have points for it, then we can work with it. So if a drone yep. can do that, then we can work with it. Uh, if you have photogrammetry and you convert that into the cylinder that we can work with that. Um, we've had some very surprising results from lots of different places that we didn't expect. So uh, we actually don't know what the capability is going to be yet. We've just have the data that we have, which we don't have that much data comparatively to the hundreds and thousands of customers that we have. Um, so we're excited to see what happens. Uh, yeah, E3D is the sorry. This is just I'm answering questions that are popping in right now. <laughs> um, E3D is a, is an option. Um, that we're looking for for Aviva as an export for that, um, other than Plant 3D. Uh, and for unifying, you can use Recap, but anything that unifies data would be fine. Okay. Um, I think at this point, I mean, if there are, in, we have given another minute here for a couple more questions, but um, Ted, I really appreciate the, the project and, and you working with us on it. I'm glad that Trevor was able to help you through and, and kind of get you over the hump and you were able to have this first project with Edgewise be a success. I mean, that's, um, that, that is a hard thing to have for any project type of any kind. And uh, especially with something like this, where there's so much unknowns and, and so much data to work with and, you know, timelines are tight. So um, that's really impressive and, uh, and definitely, definitely appreciate you coming on for this, uh, for this at this point in the afternoon for you. Thanks for the invite, and yeah, it's been nice to share share our story, and uh, yeah, hopefully more to come. Awesome. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Ted. And again, thank you, everyone, for uh, going ahead and basically you know, signing up for this webinar. We all hope you enjoyed it. So again, today's webinar is recorded, so we'll be sending out a recording link, so that way you guys can watch the webinar, distribute it around. Uh, with that, if there's any additional questions, feedback, if you want to get in contact with us, uh, if you go ahead and look up clearedge3d.com, uh, our website does have a contact form where you can get a hold for either sales inquiries, technical questions, all that. Again, we're always more than happy to be here to answer all those questions. So um, I guess with that, again, thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar. And again, thank you so much, Ted, for being a part of this. Again, Fantastic project. So happy to see you guys knock it out of the park. Again, great job. Can't wait to see what things you guys are going to be doing in the future. All right. I guess with that, enjoy the rest of the day, everyone, and happy modeling. <laughs>